So Henry, in terms of the crypto world generally, I think we're all feeling a bit of a lull after all the hype, you know, there's the Bitcoin crash and all of that, some people losing money. Um, what's your take on that? Is there sort of something fundamentally wrong or is it just the next step in the cycle? Absolutely. I think crypto volatility, the price of Bitcoin, really is making the news. A lot of people talk about it. But frankly, that's more of a distraction than anything else. I think the elements or the metrics that we should focus on are other more uh, institutional focused items. For example, the number of institutional players entering the crypto space, or the number of uh, jurisdictions providing regulatory clarity, or the number of the, the growth of the ecosystem that we're seeing. And frankly, I believe those are more important metrics because they have a broad, bigger impact on the crypto ecosystem, not only in the short to medium term, Term, but definitely on the long term as well. You know, in Malta, we've, we've had a stab at this, uh, you know, uh, achieving regulatory clarity, uh, at least to the extent we can in these initial stages. I mean, where do you see the regulatory role? I mean, we're trying to protect against risks or we're trying to enable innovators sort of to push them forward? Absolutely. I think Malta, to all his credit, I mean, has been really a, a leader when it comes to providing clarity on the regulatory front on crypto markets. And anywhere I go in the world, in any conversation, whether it's for banks, industry players, or regulators, Malta always comes up. I think the inter interesting thing right now as well, we have regulatory clarity, will be to provide comfort and, and more uh, support to the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, for example, uh, more clarity on the accounting side, on the tax side, but also on practical business matters when it comes to opening bank accounts, to actually being able to uh, support the ecosystem from a talent perspective. But really hats off to Malta from this perspective to really having taken the lead on this. And I'm sure will be very positive in the mid, mid and long term. Yeah, you're mentioning the traditional financial services businesses, okay, the banks, insurance companies, and so on. I mean, these guys have been you know, embracing fintech for a while now and working with it day to day, but somehow in this space, in relation to crypto, they're a little bit slow, a little bit skeptical, not sure how to describe it. Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what's important for financial institutions to understand is that crypto assets are here to stay, whether they want it or not. And the, 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 what's the benefit for a lot of these financial institutions is it, is it provides match an opportunity for new revenues. Uh, for example, many have been looking at blockchain as a way of reducing cost. But for crypto assets, uh, it provides them a lot of new top line revenue growth opportunities, whether it's offering crypto custody, crypto trading, crypto asset management products. And I think that's a great opportunity for traditional banks. It's something that we haven't seen for a long time in the industry. I think this is why crypto assets are very exciting from that perspective. Henry, thanks for your insights. Thanks for having me.